Hey, hey everybody, I'm Z Garcia, and today I'm taking a look at a filler card game with a bizarre theme. This is Peppers of the Caribbean. In this game, the players are going to be playing cards from their hand in order to gather other cards into their hand and make sets. It's a set collection card game. You are trying to get the most victory points from those cards you are keeping, as well as various goals out in the center of the table that you are hoping to score before other players do or possibly at the end of the game. Let's go ahead and take a look at how this all works together. We'll come on back after that. I'll tell you what I think of it. The objective of the game is to get the most victory points and players are going to earn those victory points from cards that they have banked by the end of the game. So this card, for example, would be worth three victory points. This one would be worth one and so on. And from these bonuses down here, which are randomly flipped over from a stack of bonuses, some of them are in-game bonuses, some of them we will deal with at the end of the game. And so they're all basically set collecting uh, ideas. So you're trying to get, you know, three yellow peppers gets you that one, three fish cards gets you that, and then at the end of the game, the most red peppers would get you that one and so on. Everyone has a hand of four cards, you've got six revealed, and you are ready to begin. So let's talk about how players actually get these cards and how they bank those cards. On your turn, you are going to do one of two things. You can either take some of these cards or you can play a set in front of you and from those cards, you might bank one or two. Uh, to take cards from the center, you need to play a card from your hand first of all, and uh, that card is going to denote what you can take from the revealed ones. So let's say, for example, that I choose to play this card here. It's a green card, and it is a bread card as well. So it has two features, the number being just the value of uh, victory points if it's scored at the end of the game. So for right now, I can ignore it, but of course you want to keep an eye on those. Now, if I play that card from my hand, I have to select either the green peppers or the bread. If I select the green peppers, and again, I'm discarding this card, I will take all the green peppers and add them to my hand. If I select the bread instead, I will take all the bread cards and add them to my hand. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. I'm gonna discard this one and I'm gonna take these two into my hand and then we reveal new ones so that there are again six and it would be the next player's turn. The next player is going to play this card here and they could either say blue or fish. They'll go ahead and say blue. And they're gonna take this card and this one. This potion has no food, but it is two colors. It's blue and red. So it could be taken with red, it could be taken with blue, and when we get to playing sets, it will be both those colors. I'll get to that in just one sec. So this player will take both of those, they'll discard the one they played, we reveal new ones, and this continues with the players around the table. Now to play a set from your hand, you need to play three or four cards, three or four colors, and all of the colors must be different, and all of the items must be different. So let's say, for example, I'm not quite ready to do that, but let's say I was, and I would play this, this, and I'm just gonna pick a different one from out here. Uh, let's go with that one. So I could do this. I could do blue, yellow, green, and it is ham, bread, soup, all right? That's okay, that's a valid play. I could play those three. Now, from whatever I play, three or four, so if I could get the red card out here with the fish, that would be a full set of four. That's the most I could do. I am going to discard two of these cards. So say I want to discard these two. And then everything that's left, one or two cards, if I played three or four respectively, I'm going to bank those. So I would put those in front of me, and that, I start making victory points that way. After I do that, I also want to check if I qualify for any of these now. I don't, and then my turn is over. At the end of every turn, by the way, you also have to check your hand limit. You can only carry over seven cards from round to round. So the game is forcing you to play sets because otherwise you're just wasting cards. So that could be my turn, is playing a set of cards. And the players are going to go back and forth as soon as I play my third yellow. If this is still here, 
then I will take that card and I have a bonus three victory points if I do that. We continue going until the deck has run out of cards, finish out the game, and then we assign these based on what everyone has collected. If I have more green peppers than you, great, I get this one as well, and so on for the other ones. This last one being a combination of who has the most uh, with uh, ham and soup combined. So the total of those two things. Uh, at the end, we're gonna count up our victory points, and whoever has the most victory points is going to be the winner of the game. So there you go, that is everything there is to Peppers of the Caribbean. Let's go back up top, let me tell you what I think of it. So there you go, that's Peppers of the Caribbean. Uh, I'll, I'm gonna tell you first of all the things I thought were not great, and end with the strong, with the positive points. So. Weird things, and the main negative for me is the theme. What, what? What is this? Peppers of the Caribbean? I get that it's a pirates-themed game with peppers instead of pirates and dishes, like fish and bread and stuff, but... I, what? Uh, so, the theme is really strange and bizarre. Uh, I guess it makes for some cartoony artwork. That's all right, but it's it's... Just, uh, it's honestly, I think, gonna get more in the way than help, you know? And that's always the main ding for me. If I have to explain to people, it's like, well, it's just kind of like a joke theme. Forget about it. Let me teach you the game. Then uh, it doesn't really help anything. Why peppers? It could have been goats of the Caribbean, and it would have been the exact same thing. There's no reason for it to be food. That's what I mean. You know, mechanically, it doesn't tie into anything. So that's my main negative. Uh, a couple of other things I thought were just so-so. Uh, the, the quality of the product itself. Card quality is very high. Linen finished cards, they're, they're, they're great, they have a great feel. But they are very black bordered cards. As in, they will show. The cards will show wear and tear fairly quickly. I don't like that. For cards that are this high quality, that was an unfortunate thing to see. And then uh, the other thing I thought was just... Uh, can be punishing is the luck in the game. Now there are tactics in play. You've got those those cards out there in the center of the table that you can attempt to target. I like that. There's something to go for. But the flip of the six cards in the center of the table and the one you've got that's got to be in your hand, you have to play to, to take others, that leads to some serious luck in the game. For one thing, you have to remember that you cannot ever put into a set your last card in your hand. That's illegal. You must keep one card to discard and get others, okay? But it's happened in several games where when your turn comes up, you have no card in your hand that could take any of the cards in the in the uh, pool. And there is no rule in there for that. They don't mention it. Now, I had to look online, and apparently the designer says, just skip a turn. Okay, that's fine, but that would have been useful if it had been in the rule book, A, and B, that kind of doesn't feel great to just have to skip a turn because of the luck of the flip. So that gets a ding. Again, so it's a balance, right? I'm, I'm of two minds. There is the tactics there of, you know, going for something, but then the luck also. Everything else I do like, the, the replayability. There's a lot of bonus cards. Lots of those out there. And you could, depending on the, on the flip, you know, when you're setting up the game, many of them could be in-game targets, or many of them could be end-of-game targets. Sometimes you have a nice split. Sometimes you have literally all of them you want to go during the game, and there's one end-game bonus. So, I like that. I like that that changes the feel of the game a little bit. Um, and I think the length of the game is good. You know, it's a good filler. Play-wise, I do enjoy this game. I know I'm probably sounding more negative than I mean to, because of the little things that irked me about the game, you know, like that rule not being in the rule book, and then the black border cards being the main ones. Plus the theme is just bizarre. But I did enjoy this as a filler game. I've enjoyed the designer's previous games, and this, uh, Emmanuel Ornella is the designer, this feels like a reworking in some ways of a previous game of his that I really, really enjoy called Bizans. That game is a bidding game. This one's not. So this one's faster. And the set collection aspect, this idea of, you know, gathering enough things so that when some burn away, you still keep some good stuff, that's reused in this. I like that concept. I think it's a, it's a neat idea. 
for a quick filler with still a spark of thought in there. So I do enjoy it. And in fact, this one is going to get a seal of approval from me. It just sque squeaks into one. Uh, I'm giving this like a seven out of 10. So I do like it. I would recommend that certainly if you are looking for a filler game, if you think the theme here is maybe funny, if you think you're gonna you know, get some good laughs out of it, and you like the idea of a, of a set collection game with a little something different about it, I would say this fits. But there are a lot of filler games out there, so it's quite likely also that you might not need it. Still having said all that, again, seal of approval. I did enjoy my time with it. And you know what? I think I'm going to keep on playing it. So there you go. Peppers of the Caribbean. I'm Z Garcia. I'll see you on the next one. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com.